Hi there, Dr. Tucker back again. Uh, this week we're going to talk about amino acids. And we're going to do a couple of procedures just to investigate different properties of amino acids. So I'll show you. We have all these different amino acids that we're going to uh, look at. I'll show you the list of them. I'll post this on Canvas also, just so you know what we're looking at here. We're going to do two different tests. I'll start with the thin layer chromatography. So chromatography is just used to separate different molecules out uh, within the chromatography solvent as they run up the chromatography sheet. Um, and that can be used to tell you what, which molecules you have, depending on what they look like on the sheet. So I've got my sheet all set up. I just kind of drew a line across the bottom. And that's our origin. And then each of the little dashes on there is where I'm going to place a dot or spot of all of the different amino acids that we're going to test. So I'll put several spots. Um, I'll let them dry completely between applications. The more spots you can build up, the better the chromatogram it looks at the end after it's all run. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So just to demonstrate, I'm going to show you how I'm putting the spots on here. You can see I went through and I numbered each of those dashes. So number one is proline, and I've loaded it into our micropipetter. And I'm just putting just the tiniest little spot. Not easy to do while I'm holding it. And you can see it's barely there. And I'm going to let that dry, and I'll repeat that several times. And I'll do that for all of them. Okay, I put about six or seven spots on here of each of the different amino acids. You can't really see them, they dry up pretty quickly on this paper. Now I'm gonna take this sheet and put it into a chromatography chamber. So you can see that behind me. And it's just this box. And I'm gonna pour chromatography solvent in the bottom. It's got a pad along the back that will help increase the amount of solvent that is touching this. And then I will just stick this in there like that. Put the cover on. I'm going to put the whole thing into a hood vent because it's really smelly like chemicals. And then the solvent will run up the sheet and it will take the different amino acids with it uh, to different levels depending on the, the molecules in the amino acid. So I will run that for a little while and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so the chromatography sheet is in the hood vent and that's working away. Uh, it's been in there about 45 minutes. It's probably got another half an hour or so to go. In the meantime, I am setting up our other experiment. So I have all of these different test tubes with those same amino acid solutions in them. I've also, so there's a milliliter and a half of each of those amino acids, and I've also added one milliliter of sodium hydroxide. That is here. And that's a base. So the final step of this is going to be to add Benedict's reagent, which we added to the carbohydrates. In the presence of this base, though, the Benedict's reagent actually tests for the presence of peptide bonds. So we know that peptide bonds are what bond the amino acids together. So if we get a positive reaction on this, we'll know that that solution has amino acids bonded together. They're not free amino acids. So I'm going to do that, and I'll show you the results of that. OK. So after I added the Benedicts to each of those, plus the sodium hydroxide, it's hard to see the color changes on a lot of them here, but I took photos and I'll post those again. But you see a range of colors that each of these change. Show some kind of more individually. This one's kind of a purple. This one stayed pretty blue. Maybe even got black. So there's a range of different colors, and you'll see those better in the photos that I post. So you can use those to fill in the tables in your lab manual and answer the questions about them. 
uh, and then I'll come back with the finished uh, chromatogra chromatogram from our chromatography and I'll show you guys that. Okay, so this has now run and hung up to dry. Now when it's heated, a lot of these spots are going to show up a lot better. So I'm going to take a hair dryer and blow on these to get them hot and I'll bring them back and show you. Okay, so after heating, you can see a lot more spots have come out. Now I will take a photo of this to post it and I will also give you measurements along the side and you can use, so this is the solvent front I've marked at the top, I don't know if you can see it. Um, you can use the ratio of how far the spot has moved to the how far the entire solvent front has moved and that can give you the RF value or the retention factor and that is pretty characteristic for different uh, amino acids. So I'll post photos of this um, on Canvas and then you can use results from this and results from the previous test to fill in all the data tables in your lab manual and answer those questions. And that's it for this week. Next week there will be some uh, simulators that you can work um, through your computer. So we'll do that for enzymes. Um, I may do one more video, but we're going to see if I can find you simulators instead. All right. Thanks, guys.